And so far, we have been talking about adjusting for p-values. And in fact, there are a method of adjusting for alpha level. And this is simply doing the same thing as adjustment for p-values. But in this method, instead of manipulating p-values, and you can actually change uh, significance level, typically 5%. And then here, instead of multiplying by p-values, you divide alpha level by total number of comparison. So here, and you don't claim statistical significance unless your p-value is less than 0 0.05 divided by 6, which is 0 0.0083. By doing this, and only one p-value remains significant. Okay. So result uh, is, in fact, the same. Whether you multiply p-value by 6 or you adjust alpha level by dividing by 6. Okay, does it make sense? And there is actually a um, benefit of adjusting alpha level. Because if you start manipulating p-values, a reader may confuse how p-values are manipulated. But instead of manipulating p-values, you, know, you could state in the stat section, say, all statistical analysis are uh, examined with sigma level 5% divided by total number of comparison. And th that way, they, it's probably easier uh, for reviewers to understand what's happening. Okay. And also, adjusting for alpha level instead of p-values, and we could apply this concept of uh, multiplicity adjustment in sample size computation. So, if you want to conduct sample size analysis for using a PS for the study involving three groups, okay, now what you can do is you can base sample size on two groups, okay, although manipulating alpha level. So when you have a three groups to compare, and you have a choice to make in terms of total number of comparisons, if you claim you only compare new drug, let's say you have two types of new drug, and then control drug, and you have three groups, but you just you just compare drug one versus control group and drug two versus control group, and total number of PIYs comparison is two. So you divide alpha level by two, and which is 0 0.025, and then you grab that alpha and put it in a PS. Okay, so it will say you require 93 patients in each group, and, um, and then you multiply that by three and that give you total number of subject for your study. And instead, if you want to compare drug one versus drug two also then, and you are conducting three pairwise, and then you divide alpha level by three, and then plug that number in PS, and then PS will tell you, you need 103 samples per arm, and you multiply that by three, and then that is a sample size for your study. Okay. Right. In this example, and we will talk about how to adjust confidence interval uh, using uh, multiplicity adjustment. In this example, show 30-day age sex standardized mortality rate among patients who are hospitalized with MRI, grouped by regions in England. Okay, and per a uh, million persons. So you see uh, here, okay, and about um, about ten um, ten thousand ten thousand patient die among million uh, persons uh, in regions called the Croydon in England. 
and that has the best uh, mortality. And the worst mortality you can find in the region of Northwest Manchester, Lancaster, and that is about uh, 35, about 40, uh, 40,000 uh, deaths among million persons. Okay? And then when you compare each of confidence interval to the average of England, average mortality in England, and you can judge uh, which hospitals or regions are better than average. These blue regions are actually better than average because confidence interval doesn't cover this average, doesn't include this average. And then these black bolded regions are worse uh, because confidence interval doesn't cover this average and mortality is higher than the average, okay? And this is a clearly the result of multiple comparisons. Since you conduct so many uh, p-values, confidence interval linked to p-value. So uh, when you show more than one confidence interval um, and then you are facing to multiplicity issue, okay? So in this case, what instead you can do is, um, and instead of using 5%, 95% confidence interval, you compute 99.98% confidence interval. And how I computed this confidence interval, and um, I divide 5% by 25 and that gives 0.02% uh, um, percent. Uh, so one minus of that and gives 99.98% confidence interval. So I counted these are, um, I counted about 25 comparisons on this field. In fact, and they didn't share all comparisons, so probably we need to penalize more uh, in this case. Okay. So after you use 99.98% confidence interval, and that makes confidence interval larger. And therefore, and only few regions, much fewer regions are now claimed as better or worse than the national average. Okay, so actually only these two um, here. Maybe this one too. Okay. <clears throat> there. So you can uh, use by adjusting for alpha level, and you can uh, easily apply multiplicity adjustment in confidence interval or in sample size computation. We uh, we learn how to adjust for p value or significant level alpha level for multiple comparisons. You know, the adjustment for multiple comparisons is highly controversial. In the book of Stevenson, uh, famous British statisticians, um, he is the authority. He said it can be claimed that if all tests conducted are reported, not only significant but non-significant results, then there should be no problems. So he said it's okay not to adjust for multiplicity if you share result of all the hypothesis testing you conducted. Okay. So when that becomes a problem is when you start cherry picking. And when you start selectively reporting those tests which are significant and ignoring other result, and this does cause a bias. Okay. So the very important thing is you need to show all of the result of your analysis on the analysis a priori planned. A priori means before you look at data, then you know what the test you're going to perform. Once you put it in a protocol, and then you need to show the result of all the analysis. So Sam, Stephen says as long as you do that, you don't have to adjust for multiple comparisons. And also he said, in general, the probability of making at least uh, on one type one error, at least on type one error, depends upon coordination between the outcomes. 
The Bonferroni co correction is rather pessimistic and will be conservative, whereas may usually be expected to be the case. Clinical outcomes are positively coordinated. So when the tests are coordinated and he said Bonferronis are too conservative, okay, in the method which account for those coordinations and it typically gives uh, less conservative adjustments are uh, more suitable. So let's talk about situations where multiple comparison may occur. So number one is one we have been talking about. This is to compare, um, compare among many groups. So you can conduct uh, pairwise comparison, multiple pairwise comparison. Okay. And number two, when including more than one independent variable in the regression. And so in this case, in a U, for example, want to assess effective age, uh, gender, and BMI, and smoking, uh, cholesterol, on uh, antioxidative stress as an outcome. And then you have four independent variables in a regression. So each independent variable compute p-value, right? So now you have four p-value. And this actually is um, applicable for multiplicity issue. In order to avoid this multiplicity issue with the regression, many regression come with a test called a global test. And that global test simultaneously compare all of the parameters in the regressions are the same or not. So it's sort of ANOVA type of analysis. You simultaneously assess effect are all the same. In this case, zero. Okay, and then this global test for regressions, you know, simultaneously assess um, parameters are zero or not. And if the p-value for the global test you reject, and then that indicate at least one parameter is not from zero. It's not zero. And therefore, you are allowed to look at each uh, individual p-values from uh, these independent variables. Okay. And that's the regression method of adjusting for multiple comparisons. And number three, when more than one outcome variable is assessed. So when you conduct, for example, RCT, and you may look at mortality as an outcome or hospital length of stay as another outcome, ICU length of stay and hospital cost or time to off from ventilation and or um, biomarkers, many biomarkers. So these are mo many outcome variables. Each outcomes probably you assess p-value, right, of independent variable, then uh, multiple outcome variables actually is applicable for multiplicity issue, okay? And how about next scenarios? You conduct analysis, okay? Like you measure F2 isoprostine between two groups and visit one, visit two, visit three in at the study end. So many time point you compare um, outcome between the groups. So in this case, if you do compare um, two groups in time one, that's one test, time two, that's another test, time three, that's another test. So for each time point, then you compute p-value. And this is applicable for multiplicity issue, right? And, um, okay. So the, the difference between three and four and one and two are in fact three and four, when three outcomes are related and four, you repeat analysis over and over at different time points. And these 
many tests are correlated in three and four, and um, tests are correlated. For example, mortality may correlate longer hostile length of stay, longer hostile length of stay correlated with longer IC length of stay, longer IC length of stay correlated higher cost in ICU, and longer time to extubation from uh, ventilation, and so on. So when the outcomes are coordinated, some markers, IL-6 coordinated with um, C CRP, and, and so on. Some markers are coordinated. So when the variables are coordinated, you don't want to use a method such as Bonferroni, it's which totally ignore coordination. Okay. And so method of three and four, we um, we use slightly different method, okay, which consider coordination among the test. Okay. In one test to do with that is called a MANOVA. And MANOVA stands for multivariable, multivariate analysis um, of variance, multivariate analysis of variance. And what ANOVA does, ANOVA has a many groups compare. MANOVA actually have many outcome variables to compare. Okay. So MANOVA returns one p-value, which assess effective group is zero on any of outcome variable. And if the MANOVA detects significance, that means effective group is not the norm on at least one outcome variable and therefore you are allowed to look association between group and each outcome variable. So MANOVA is a similar similar to ANOVA although this deal with multiplicity issue among outcome variables. And then lastly when uh, multiple interim analysis are performed during a course of a study and, <coughs> and we do have a method to deal with uh, multiplicity but those methods are slightly different from a verb one two three four so we use a method of a Pocock method O'Brien Fleming method and we have Peto Pedo method and um, so uh, I'm sure you have learned this method in clinical trial class and those methods are, are also developed to deal with multiplicity. Okay, so it's fit under the same umbrella.